Hi, folks. Welcome to another episode of Film Study. This is Ken McCusick. We're here to continue our discussion of that one play. It's a series of uh, iconic moments in Ravens history that we're going back and reviewing. And today we've got a really cool one that that a lot of even younger fans will remember. And that's the 2014 interception between his legs by Terrell Suggs that helped put away that wild card playoff game against the against the Steelers, which had a lot of long standing implications against the Steelers, against Pittsburgh and Baltimore. But here to discuss that with us is Shai Oren, uh, all the way from Israel. Shai, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Ken. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're most welcome. Great, great choice of play, by the way. And tell people where they can follow you on Twitter or talk to you otherwise online about football. My Twitter handle is at Shai Oren. It spells S-H-A-Y-O-R-E-N on Twitter. And uh, always welcome to speak about the Baltimore Ravens or uh, American football. In English. <laughs> All right. Outstanding. So, uh, uh, Shai, really appreciate you having you on. We'll do a little bit of setup for this game real, real quickly. So the Ravens had split their games versus the Steelers. And after a, a long number of consecutive, very close games, the Ravens won by 20, 26 to 6 early in the season. And then the Steelers returned the favor with a 43 to 20, I believe, or maybe it was, yeah, 43, 23. In 43, 23. And uh, Rottersberger had uh, six touchdown passes on that. Uh, it was a, a career high, uh, I guess, think, uh, uh, game for him. And each team had won on the road, correct? So the Ravens won 26 yes. to 6. Yeah. So it was a, a little bit of an oddball uh, set of circumstances. So the Ravens ended up going back into Heinz Field to uh, play this playoff game in the wild card round. Obviously, the Steelers won the division. I think that's true. Yeah. The Steelers would have won the division. Or the Ravens would have they been there. won the division. They were uh, 11 to 5. And uh, the Ravens were third place after the Bengals and were sixth seed and went to Pittsburgh for, I think it was the third time of a playoff game. Uh, they in, had uh, 2000, 2001, 2008, 2010, 2014. So it's so the fifth, fifth fourth time, time, fourth time, and uh, never won there. Had, they had never won there. And in fact, we'll get into this a little bit later about there's some other losing streaks that were on the line there for, for a, a long time as well. But a little bit about the flow of the game. It had been a fairly close back and forth game, but the Ravens had led. Uh, let's see. It's, it's uh, what well, do you want to talk about? Talk through this in terms of the setup. Uh, first of all, uh, uh... This was very. Uh, this was the Steelers' offense at its peak, with uh, uh, Roethlisberger and uh, Le'Veon Bell and uh, Antonio Brown with the uh, uh, record-setting uh, record-setting season. I think it was uh, uh, Roethlisberger had uh, around uh, 5,000 yards of passing. And uh, but uh, Le'Veon Bell was uh, uh, injured and uh, did not uh, practice. And uh, for the Ravens, it was a very strange uh, offensive line. With uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this was the first time that Marshall Yanda was the right tackle. Uh, if I'm, if I'm uh, Marsh, Marshall Yonder was at right tackle. He'd done that before was, in 2010, but that's okay. He's, 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 uh, he was at right tackle. Urschel at right guard. Urschel yeah. at right guard. And uh, Hurst also uh, replacement at uh, the left tackle. So uh, the offensive line was uh, was an issue for, uh, for that game. Mm-hmm. And uh, as you said, the game uh, uh, went uh, back and forth, but uh, uh, the Ravens all always uh, kept the lead, and uh, uh, the Steelers were uh, tra- uh, were trailing behind. So halftime, ten to nine. The Ravens owned the third quarter. They they had a field goal to extend that to thirteen to nine, then a touchdown to put it up to twenty to nine. You think? Got a pretty good chance now. They're 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 closing in on the game, and then what happened? Can we cut here? Uh, no, uh, I, I I'll just say it. If you don't know, that's okay. Um, <laughs> it, it, the, the Steelers came back and they they scored a touchdown uh, to, to throw a touchdown to Bryant from Roethlisberger. They failed the two point conversion, and it was twenty to fifteen. So still had a five point lead at this point. 
The Ravens returned with a, with a field goal by Tucker to go up 23 to 15. So now it's an eight point game again. It's, it's, a, it's at that nice, just to the edge of in control spot where you don't figure the Ravens are going to give up both a touchdown and a two point conversion. Is this, is this touchdown, this touchdown is before four set the fumbles? It, yeah, it's it's after it's actually after after, after the after, set fumble. After the fumble after the first the first set fumble. Yes, so, okay. So we've seen that movie before, right? Where you have an eleven point <laughs> lead and then a fumble at Pittsburgh ends up turning the game around. Uh, so it, it, it didn't want that to occur. But anyway, it's 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 twenty three to fifteen. The Steelers are getting the ball back. Now there's about eight minutes to go in the game at this point. Let me make sure I'm at the right point, and then tell us kind of what happened. <laughs> And yes, it's uh, fourth. It's the fourth quarter, and uh, before the snap, uh, the, the Steelers, uh, Roethlisberger stands at the shotgun with uh, uh, the running back uh, next to him, and uh, the Ravens' defense line stands in some odd uh, uh, formation with the uh, three men on the right and the uh, two and th- three men on and two men on the and two men on the left and right after the snap uh, the pass rush they, they rush with four men and the uh, the one uh, and the no cycle drops back i think this uh, quite uh, 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 sets uh, rotisberger uh, a bit uh, confused and uh, what is uh, uh, more confusing there is that the running back uh, tries to uh, block the uh, there are two the, 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 uh, there are two uh, uh, rushes on the uh, from the offense left and uh, he and the left tackle tries to the both try to uh, 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 the both try to block the same uh, uh, the same rusher. Mm-hmm. What it ends up is that uh, uh, Pernell McPhee r- runs right at Rotisberger. Rotisberger, as we always know, runs away from him, hides away, and uh, and he tries to set up and uh, and uh, pass to the running back. Mm-hmm. I, I don't Tate. remember his name. Tate. Tate. Tate tries to pass to uh, to Tate. But uh, somehow, I think it was, uh, I think it, I think it was McPhee. I don't remember. Catches his hand, and so mm-hmm. the pass is the pass is uh, not uh, is Flutters not away. Full. Yeah, goes away. It it runs it runs away. Now, when they try to rush, Suggs, which was always such a smart player, drops back. So he went. So he win. He he waits for the screen so he can uh, take uh, uh, the running back down. Mm-hmm. Yet when the well, yet when the pass is deflected, the Jeep Wrangler four by e it's electrified. Boogie, boogie, boogie. So you can boogie woogie woogie up a mountain, boogie. over creeks, or boogie woogie woogie, woogie through a desert. Where you get bit by a pit viper. So you boogie woogie woogie back to camp and ask your friends if they'll suck the snake venom out. When they say no, you boogie woogie woogie to the nearest hospital for a dose of anti venom and boogie woogie woogie your way to a full recovery. The electrified Jeep Wrangler 4xE. Learn more at Jeep.com. Jeep is a registered trademark of FCA US LLC. Uh, it seems as if it's the it's the ball as if the ball is caught to the ground, but there's some uh uh, 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 some scram there. You, you don't really understand what, uh, uh, what is going on, and then you see all the Ravens' defense coming out and very and cheering and very uh, and uh, and uh, uh, the play caller says that uh, it's an interception. That it might be interception, but it's it's unlikely. You don't know how it happened. When you see the when you see the playback, you see that it, the ball was tipped uh, in uh, between the Suggs' knees. Somehow he caught it. Somehow he didn't touch the grass. That's just a remarkable play in terms of rolling over. But you're right about it. he was he's in the right play to diagnose that screen pass. And it was a third and four play. So it's a play where he really wants to be in a position to make a downhill tackle to stop that first down. The, right. the, the, the Steelers probably or might have gone for it on a fourth and short there, but they might not have also, particularly if if Suggs had made a downhill tackle right at the line of scrimmage. So, and uh, with that defensive line that was massive, 
I, I, I don't think that, that they would get the, the fourth and inches if they had to. B- big year for the Ravens, uh, particularly from a pass rush perspective. They had 56 sacks that year, the second highest total in team history. And this was Elvis Dumerville's uh, really big year with the Ravens. He had uh, – bunch of sacks and i don't remember the exact number 15 and a half 16 sacks dur- during the season so he had a he had a big year and so did suggs on the other side uh, and uh, also mcphee that yes. was huge that he, that he drove that pass rush he was mcphee was just a a monster in the middle you couldn't even double team him he, he just was too good at splitting them uh too quickly he he he'd force all sorts of stunt action would go around him. He still probably is the best the Ravens have ever had. And in that particular year, in terms of being the underneath player on stunts, a guy who who anybody else could take advantage of what was happening because Purnell's first step was so big in between two blockers. That was his height. Yeah. Still so, loved having him back later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, he, had a, he had a good run. Uh after that, uh, uh, I don't remember if it was challenged. I think it was uh, uh, reviewed yeah. several times. And they say that they, they verified that the ball did not touch the grass. And it was such a weird uh, catch. The, the ball slipped down uh, his body, his Terrell Sachs' body, and he caught it with his knees and rolled back. And rolled back. Beautiful done. Yeah. Uh, the next play or the ne- or the next or second the ne- play the next play the next, next play, play Flacco uh, to tight end watch C- Crockett was? Gilmore Crockett Gilmore right another a touchdown and uh, that's uh, actually sealed the game. Uh, uh, Steelers did try to come out. There was a, a blocked uh, pl- punt there that uh, ended with uh, safety. But uh, uh, this uh, this interception, uh, I remember that uh, show, the, the film from the locker room that uh, Tyrell got the, the game ball from Harbo and he put the game ball between his knees too. So <laughs> I didn't know that. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, uh, the it, it, a few things about that to just unpack the Crockett Gilmore touchdown pass is one I really remember because. It's like there was no one over there covering him. He was just in a in an open space. Yes. Took the ball, just walked right into the end zone, and uh, it was a strange breakdown in coverage. And then Darian Stewart, who really hadn't had that very good a, a season at safety for the Ravens, and he was a young guy. They, they 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 thought they were maybe getting a bargain player coming from St. Louis. They signed him, I believe, for two years, and he ended up only playing, I believe, one year in Baltimore. But anyway, he had an interception uh, after the the Steelers had driven. About I, I, I don't remember w- 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 which was not, which one was the was the intercepted uh, uh, the intercepting player, but uh, I remember that that, that but it, it, that was a long shot by Rottersberger that uh, uh, I didn't think he, he himself thought it would be uh, become some uh, some issue. Right. So it was, that was on, that was with 304 to play. So that was, you know, the second interception to seal the game. Then the Ravens got the yes. ball and they had the punt blocked and then they, then they fumbled. Roethlisberger came in and this was, Roethlisberger had a funny in and out on this game where Gino Gradkowski came into the game because Roethlisberger had a, what was very apparently a concussion. And they didn't, they didn't at that time in the NFL force players to stay out. At least if they did, Roethlisberger ignored it and just ran into the game anyway and told Gradkowski, you know, get out of here. Uh, definitely a tough guy, but, but you know, very stupid <laughs> thing to do by today's standard. Um, that's right. And that's when he threw the interception to Stewart. So uh, uh, anyway, the, the, the Ravens team went on after this game to go to New England and lose – uh, what was the pre deflate gate game one where no doubt the, Raven, the, the the Patriots were deflating the footballs at that time too. And they lost a, a, a tight one where they had two 14 point leads, two 14 point leads, right? Yeah. Two touchdowns, two, two, two scores leads twice. Then the, that the trick played uh, from uh, the pass from uh, uh, what's his name? Edelman, I think. Edelman oh. from Ed- yes from, from Edelman that uh, that uh, they said that uh, Belichick went deep into his uh, trick uh, uh, into, into his trick back uh, to uh, to win that game. Yeah, that'll be definitely a a topic for another show because some of the things Belichick did with substitution were mandated out of the game after that season. 
So uh, yes, I remember. It, yeah, so so quite a quite an annoying game. In addition to the whole Deflate Gate crap, which which uh, you know probably frankly cost the Ravens a chance to to play in the AFC Championship. That that team was very close. The offense was good. The offense did a lot of the things necessary to win this game in Pittsburgh. Uh, and uh, and you know it was one of Flacco's. It was really Flacco's last really good year. Uh, uh, yeah, it was. I think it's uh, statistically it, it was his best year, his best uh, regular uh, regular season. Mm-hmm. He had uh, almost uh, 4,000 yards, and Kubiak system uh, was uh, fitted him very uh, very well. Yeah, yep, completely agree. Shy. Uh, it's just been a pleasure to talk about this. Thank you. With you. One more one more thing. Uh, mm-hmm. I just uh, noted, Terrell Suggs has uh, seven interceptions through his career. Mm-hmm. Only one interception at the postseason, and this is was his last interception also. So he's not, uh, he's definitely not uh, uh, Peters, but uh, he had some interceptions also. Yeah, it's some great peekaboo, peekaboo interceptions against the Steelers too, which were a lot of fun. Uh, it, it just it, it's worth a, worthy of another show entirely. Those peekaboo interceptions. But Shai, really appreciate you coming on to talk about this play. It's exactly what we're looking for, folks. Just somebody to come on individually, talk about what the play meant to them. If you want to talk historically, like a lot of Shai's uh, direction was on this, that's cool. But if you want to talk about, uh, you know, what it meant to you personally for whatever reason, that's cool as well. You want to talk about it being a turning point in the franchise. We've had one of those already that was great. Uh, you, you be you. DM me on Twitter. They're always open if you'd like to be on the show. Shai, thanks again for coming on. Thank you very much, Ken. And we'll talk to you next time on Film Study. Did you know that yearly Medicaid renewals will start again soon? This means millions of people who were enrolled in Medicaid during the pandemic may no longer be eligible for coverage. If this may impact you, the good news is you have options. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield can help answer your questions so you can find an affordable health plan for you and your family. We want you to feel confident you're covered. Click to learn more. Policy exclusions and limitations apply. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield is the trade name of Community Insurance Company.